Hey guys, uh, the second test against uh, between West Indies and South Africa kicks off tomorrow. And currently, I don't know if you guys can hear, but it is storming in Johannesburg. It is lightning, there's thunder, it's hard rain out of nowhere. Uh, there wasn't actually supposed to be raining um, from when I looked at the weather report for this week. It didn't seem like it was going to, but it is storming. It's a little bit scary, but I'm uh, I like it. Uh, I like the I like this weather. It's, it's always had a certain um it always had a certain thing for me it always did something for me um so yeah anyway let's get into today's show um but before we get going it's a jam-packed show guys it's gonna be a preview of the game as well as i'm going to show you the lineup that should be actually picked ahead of the ahead of the game but we're also going to go through the press conference um each question going to look through it what questions were asked um what should you how should you answer it I think it's very important for us to do a watch along of that particular press conference because it gives us everything that we need to know ahead of this game but before we get going before we get started please there's a couple of things i got you uh, need you guys to do subscribe to the channel click that notification bell for all future videos i'd like you guys to also please download the latest issue of cricket fanatics magazine monthly every issue is 100 free straight to your inbox every single month the link is on the screen right now as well as in the description if you want to help us promote and grow south african cricket Please become a patron today. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. It's also a way for you guys to support Cricket Fanatics magazine and help us continue doing the content that we are currently doing. We need your help to survive, guys, so please become a patron today. Also, please like, comment, and share. It's very important that you do that so that we can grow our following. And then go to cricketfanaticsmag.com for all your regular updates. There are previews, reviews, um, match reports, um, news updates, etc., all on cricketfanaticsmag.com. So please go ahead and follow us there too. And go and read us on a regular basis. It's your daily dose of Cricket Fanatics magazine, other than our podcast shows. So that's what the rule. Let's get straight into today's video. I'm looking forward to chatting to you guys about this, seeing what you guys have to say about the lineups, etc. It's a very interesting, interesting 11 that should click on red picket. A very good evening, a rainy, thundering, lightning evening from Johannesburg. A very good evening. Welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your preview show. I'm your host, Farid Mohidin. This is the show where we talk about everything that has to do with a second test between South Africa and the West Indies, which will be at the Wanderers. Kicks off at 10 um, a.m. We've got some tickets to give away, so we're going to put out a little post um, on our Instagram. And we're going to pick randomly some lucky winners to be able to go to this game. Um, we have uh, tickets for um, for the first day so far. Um, I'm probably going to be getting for the rest of this test um, as well. So let's see when I do get the rest of the tickets. But we have for day one already, and we're going to be giving away some tickets for the game. So please um, check out our Instagram. Um, go look at the post that we put up a little bit later to promote it. I know I only got them a couple of minutes ago, so I'm sorry that the competition's only going up so late. Um, but yeah, day one, let's see what you guys have to say. So before I get into the main show, um, I want to get through some super chats of the, I'm uh, not super chats as well, um, as well as comments. Um, we've got Aditya Singh saying, congratulations, Aiden Markle for becoming the captain of South Africa for the T20s. We will be doing an in-depth show on this, um, definitely, a little bit closer to the ODIs and T20s. I think it was weird for me to do it when it was released um, because then we're switching formats all the time. So I wanted to keep things in like a specific order. I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to those type of things. So we'll do an in-depth show of the press conference, break it down, um, show you the themes and the squads for both for both formats, all of that things closer to the T20s and ODIs. I won't be in Joburg when, and I won't be traveling with the team for those games. I'll be covering them from home. So. We'll be a lot more consistent with regards to the time that we'll be going live for each of these shows. So stay tuned to Click Fanatics Magazine, press the notification bell and subscribe to get that notifications of when we go live. I think just saying, Hardly, what's the reason that Mark and Klassen and Miller are our ODI and middle order is excluded from the first OD to ODI's workload management rested? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I will go through the press conference with you guys again 
and then we can discuss that later. Let's just talk about Test cricket for now and not about the, the white ball teams. Um, why is the announced the coach announced the team a day before? We shouldn't be doing that. Never uh, did that give the other teams ideas. I don't think Shukri cares about what the other team will get from this. Um, I think that the team needs to go out and perform regardless. England do it, um, and there's no issues with regards to that. They still perform. So I don't I see I, I don't see um, how that will bother us a day before. How much prep can uh, West Indies actually do heading into this match with the, with the new players that have been added to this team? I mean, it might also play mind games with, with the West Indian team. You know, we're playing two spinners, and it might be causing a little bit of thought process. might be different with regards to West Indies going into this match now that we've released that team. So I like the confidence from Shukri Conrad for, for releasing the team, giving us the team ahead of time. Neil Governor, thank you so much for another super chat, brother. Why did I have to do this? My side beat your side server. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. You paid this for a super chat to tell me that to break my heart again. Ay, ay, ay. Um, surprised by 7 or yes. Surprised by the defeat? Not necessarily. I, I was one of the Man United fans that went into this game saying, I think we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves. I think United are getting a little bit of ahead of themselves. I think the, uh, the players, I mean, I think the fans were getting a little bit of ahead of themselves. They were getting a little bit too cocky, talking about a quadruple, talking about a title challenge. I don't believe in a title challenge. All I wanted this season was a trophy and top four. So far, we've achieved that. Um, we're not confirmed to be top four at the moment. Yes, we have a little bit of a cushion, but I don't think that I knew that this game going to Anfield um, after Liverpool had a whole week off, they're always going to be up for a game. Any game at Anfield is tough. Even with the best of Man United teams that we've had in the past, every single game has been tough at Anfield. So you need to be 120% ready. Not 100% ready, 120, 150% ready to be able to beat and, um, Liverpool at Anfield. It is always a tough game. It doesn't matter who you have on the field. It doesn't matter what team you have. It's just, that crowd just gets them that team an extra two men ultimately it just feels that way um a very hostile crowd and a very hostile fan base um in that at the cop so it is something that is completely different um it's, a, it's not an ordinary game did i think we'll beat seven no no if it was three one four one maybe four two maybe even two one i would have been all right with that with a fight if we had to put in some fight i would have been okay with that but to lose 7-0 and roll over after 3-0, I was just, I was embarrassed to be a Man United fan that day. I actually went out to watch that game with a couple of friends, and I was really embarrassed to actually see that game. It, it, it completely destroyed me, honestly. I, I, I couldn't sleep the night. Um, during, before the game, I was nervous, couldn't eat. During the game, I couldn't eat. After the game, I was too depressed to eat. Couldn't sleep. I only fell asleep at 5 o'clock that morning. Um, constantly displaying everything in my mind. It was it was heartbreaking. So thank you for the super chat, bro. But yeah, uh, uh, that really sucked. Um, Lawrence Bailey saying this is something I wanted to them to do for a long time. I have a uh, I have a presser and give us the lineup. But be transparent with us and why you went with certain players doesn't leave us um, to speculate. Then yes, exactly. I thought it was a good move because it gave us the opportunity to actually ask him some questions. So. Let's get into it. Um, let me start with the starting lineup first and foremost, and what team Shukri has picked. Um, first and foremost, he's gone with Dean Alga, Aidan Markram, Tony DeZorzi, Timba Babuma, Ryan Rickerton, Andy Klaassen, Vian Mulder, Simon Harmer, Keshav Maharaj, Kahis Rabada, and Gerald Kutsia. He actually announced it the other way around with Gerald first and Kahiso last. Um, but I think that's interchangeable. I don't really think that's a strange match. Um, that's why I just put them in that order um, based on experience first. So that's the team. And I looked at the Wanderers trip today. I went down to the field, to the edge of the banks. I can't go on the field. And I looked at, I looked at the field and I was like, hmm, interesting. Um, the pitch doesn't really necessarily look that great. Eh? It looked a bit, um, it did look like there was some patches on it. Uh, it does look like it's going to turn, in my opinion, from the first look that I've had. With this rain overnight um, that we're having now, it's an absolute storm here in um, in Johannesburg. I mean, there's lightning, there's thunder, it's pouring down extremely hard. So 
how that affects the conditions for tomorrow morning, I don't know. You know, so it's crazy that this this weather came out of nowhere again. But I should be accepted of that when it comes to Joburg. Um, it's always been the case when it comes to Johannesburg. You know, um, you never know what's going to happen with regards to the weather. Because suddenly it was hot. It was hot today, and then all of a sudden it started raining yesterday. The entire day it was warm and hot, and then all of a sudden rain got recording. So I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's it's, it's crazy. The storm is insane here at the moment in Johannesburg. Um, so yeah, let's get into the press conference because I think that the press conference is going to give us some insight into what Shukri thinks. I'm going to watch it along with you guys. I was in the press, so I'm going to be re-watching it now um, because I was in the press. I asked a couple of questions. I don't know what you guys are going to think about the questions I asked, but I would like to know your thoughts in the comment section of what you think about the questions that I did ask um, in the press conference. Um, so I'm going to watch it with you guys. Let's let's watch it together. It is on the channel, guys, if you want to watch it back. Um, and uh, if you want to see what, what you had to say in a little bit more depth and maybe go back and rewind and want to re-watch what he said. But I'm going to watch it with you guys as a preview for this particular game. Um, let's get into it. Let's see what you had to say. Hello, Telford. Yes, I have. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> the 11 in batting order will be Alga, Markram, Dzorzi, Bavuma, Rickleton. Yes, Rickleton. <laughs> Look how you flirt with us, guys. Uh, class in six. <laughs> Vian Mulder at seven. Simon Harmer at eight. Keshav Maharaj at nine. Gerald could see at 10 and Kachisa Rabada at 11. Um, yeah, uh, as you would rightly say, he's not in there. Um, I still think he, his best position might be five going forward um, in terms of the way he plays. Uh, but again, uh, this test batting unit is still a, a work in progress. So, um, but hopefully by design and not stumbling on something, we're gonna we're gonna get the right mix. So I still feel going forward, Keegan's got a, a bigger role to play in the in the middle order rather than at the, t the top order. Um, Rickleton deserves his crack at it. Uh, he's, as everybody knows, he's been churning it out. Um, we went with Keegan at the, in, in the first test simply because he was the incumbent. And again, him being left out is not on the back of two, shall we say, uh, non-scoring performances rather than poor performances. Um, as you might notice also that everybody in the squad has now got a run. Um, and when I mean run, I mean an opportunity to play. Yeah, so that's interesting that Shukri said that. Um, he believes that Keegan Peterson is the best suited to the to the middle order, rather um, the, the bottom order, middle order, than the top order, obviously. And I have to agree. And the reason why I agree with this is I feel that Temba Bavuma and Keegan Peterson as a partnership in the middle order, I think is quite dangerous. I think that the way they play the game, especially with the way we want to play from the, from the beginning of the game with a more attacking brand of cricket or a more positive brand of cricket, I think that Keegan suits that middle order when we when the ball is a little older and when we lose a couple of wickets and we need to kind of keep up, push ourselves out of trouble. I think Keegan suits that that middle order. Now I don't think it's a like for like swap when it comes to Ryan Bickleton and Keegan Peterson. I think Keegan is a, uh, is someone that that takes his time in the middle and and gets himself in. Whereas Ryan Rickleton, dependable on the conditions, dependable on what he's facing, he can turn it on whenever he wants. He's quite um, he's quite adaptable, I think, with regards to Ryan. Every time I watch him bat, he is quite positive in the way he wants to play, and and I'm excited to watch him play. I really am happy that Ryan Rickleton is getting his crack. I thought that he should have played in the first game in Centurion. I don't think that um, they should have gone with a, a all rounder. I thought they should have gone with seven batters, and I did make that very clear in my preview. Um, but well, like I've said on many occasions, I back Shukri 100%. I, I back his decisions that he makes. I don't agree with everything that he says. Um, and I'm sure he knows that too um, in conversations that we've had. But um, I do like the way 
he thinks, and I like that there's no sentiment in selection. Um, even a guy like Sunaran Mutasami, who he backed to be in the squad, and maybe a lot of people don't agree that he should have been in the squad in the first place. He's dropped him now after two bad performances. So, yeah, I like the way we're going with this. I like that the fact that we've looked at the conditions and picked accordingly. Some people think that we're just chopping and changing, but these team selections are based on reading the conditions and picking the best players for that conditions. And I think that's exactly what Shukri did. I looked at the pitch from afar, and it did look like it was a, a wicket that is not that that typical fast bowler's heaven that the Wanderers has always been. I think that there's going to be something in it for the spinners, and I think it's going to be a lot more difficult to bat on this particular wicket. Um, so let's continue this particular press conference. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Let's just see what some of you guys have to say here. Um, um, I'm late to the show. I must have, I must, uh, but I must say I'm quite happy with this team. Rickerton should take the gloves and play instead of Klaassen. I like Klaassen, but I do think it just makes more sense to Pat Rickerton instead of him. Well, they're both playing tomorrow, so let's have a look at what, how they do together. There's me. You know, this brand of cricket has been bandied about quite a bit because we, um, yeah, there's a lot of talk of, of how we want to play our game. And it will often play itself out in the batting department. Um, and again, it's no secret that we weren't particularly good at Centurion. Yes, we got away with a good result, but if the truth be told, we, we weren't particularly good. They were, the West Indies were good, and the wicket was tough, but it doesn't then mean that we just roll over. As we, as we did the other day and have done in the past. So, yeah, um, unique set of circumstances. We don't play a lot of test cricket, and that's been well documented. Um, so I've got to find novel ways of finding out a little bit more about these guys. So if it then plays itself out in giving everybody a go and see that, how they react, um, and then hopefully through the year we find create other opportunities, then so be it. But that brand will take a bit longer on the batting front, you know, and... and, and I think on the bowling front, the brand was great because we played our four quicks and we showed what we, what we, we are about there. Um, I think there's just a little bit of patience required in terms of the batting side, yeah. A nice, honest answer, and he's spot on. Um, <laughs> there's still a lot of improvements um, that, needs to be, um, that needs to be made with regards to the batting department. Finding that, you see, it's not just about the selecting players and hoping that they perform. That's not what it's going to be about. I think if they have to bold an ethos, a style of play, find ways to get the, the best out of themselves, learn how to read the conditions better and try to adapt to those conditions. I think Shukri is going to be working a lot with his bowling unit, batting unit and trying to figure out how we're going to be able to transition into a more consistent, to get more consistency from our batters. That's been the biggest issue with our batters is that we haven't been consistent. There's always been a batter here and there that has, that has, um, basically saved us or taken us out of trouble um that that is the the main thing about our batting unit that i've been irritated with is that we, we're not really having this consistency um dean alga was a savior for for a lot for a period of time then it was Timba and Kwani. um then it was um keegan peterson against india now it's aiden markram against australia and, and Kwani against australia also ab in some matches that time with the ball tampering and then on top of it, you get this particular game with Aiden Markram against Xavier in this particular match. Um, so we need to find consistency. I want to. I want us to get to that stage where we're ruthless again, scoring 400, 500 with ease, um, putting the taking it taking it to the opposition and making it hard for them to chase it. Because with our bowling attack, we can. I feel that we can defend almost in total. So if we can put a lot on the board, it's even easier for our bowlers to perform and do their duties. There's not as much as much pressure on them to strike as quickly as they always do. And it just makes it a lot more ruthless when you win, if you have more on the board. So, yeah, we need to find the consistency. Um, I was also not, I mean, Shukri clearly said he wasn't happy with the brand when it comes to South Africa with the batters. And they're working on to find a consistency with this unit. Let's move on. Um, 
Yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, what's his name, Frost has done a good job of covering the, the, the massive bear patch there. Um, so optics is <laughs> a big thing. It looks okay, but I think, and history would suggest in the last year um, that the spinners do come into the game here. All right? Uh, and if it's, it's and again, it, it does, the game doesn't have to end on day three. Eh? A test match is, is meant to go to day five. And if it goes to days four and five, I do think our spinners will come into it in a big way. So um, hopefully we can get enough runs and then on days four and five, our spinners can really come into it, which I think um, it looks quite an abrasive surface. The one end will probably be a lot more seamer friendly than the other end, mm. we think. Okay. Um, and we've, look, we've got a lot of IP in the, in the change room. KG, Demba play their cricket here, Neil Max been here over all the years. I had a stint here many, many moons ago. Um, so, yeah, we feel that the wicket at some stage will, will offer quite a bit for the spinners. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when I looked at the wicket, it didn't look like a flat track or it didn't look like a pace wicket. Um, there was an end. I, I particularly looked at one end, uh, um, to be honest with you. Um, and I saw that there was one end that looked a little bit rough-ish. Um, looks like they, they can be spinning it as the days go along. Shukri summed it up actually beautifully. And I think that's the reason why he obviously picked up his the, the picked the team that he did. Um, like I've said on many occasions, if you've watched our content and you've been a fan of Cricket Fanatics magazine for a while, we need to go with the under 19 job. But the first couple of questions that I asked him was about how to read conditions, teaching players how to read conditions. And he is a man that has that told us on, on our channel, you guys all watched it live with me. Um, he's a type of person that looks at the conditions and then he picks accordingly because that in cricket that's what makes cricket so special that's the one thing that i think makes cricket so exciting is the conditions the pitch etc reading that and being able to change your strategy or change your mindset according to what the conditions are doing what the pitch is doing etc that's what makes it so strategic and that's why i love this cricket so much it's because it's strategic you have to think about it i was always a fan of a st strategy games in the past like um, age of mythology age of empires um starcraft all of those type of games when i was a kid and it's all about strategy and, and adapting to what is happening um in the match situation and according to the conditions like i said it's storming here in Joburg. i hope it's not going to storm tomorrow i mean Joburg weather is so fickle you don't know what's going to happen it changes at any point um so yeah um it's storming tonight and overnight so i don't know how that's going to affect the conditions tomorrow if it make it make it, it will probably even make it worse but the fact that there's going to be an end that Shukri said here as well, where the bowler, where the fast bowlers will be able to exploit it. And there's an end where more spinners can exploit it. I think we've got the perfect balance in this team. Vian Mulder plays his cricket here too, who's going to be playing tomorrow. Ryan Rickleton plays his cricket here too. KG, um, Temba, um, Simon Armour has been very good at, the, at, the, at this particular venue as well in the past. So um, Keshav has been good at this venue in the past, for, in test cricket as well as in... Um, in, in for the dolphins so let's see um i think this is a the i think this is the right decision this 11 based on the conditions i would have picked the same 11. um so it's it's, it's interesting i mean bar one player maybe i would have had marco jansen probably in the team um but uh they're resting him i mean marco jansen has had a crazy crazy three years right? like since he made his he made his uh, move uh, debut into professional cricket he hasn't stopped he's played from one thing to the next from domestic cricket from under 19 cricket to domestic cricket to the ipl to the pro tiers back to the sa20 and now back to the test cricket again for south africa so he's been i mean he needs some rest ultimately because they he literally has played in almost every single game that he's been available in so i I'm okay with that decision because I mean Vian Mulder is the type of guy that can exploit these conditions and understands these conditions extremely well. Him working with um the Lions, um the Lions is um video an analyst, um P Dog, I think that would have given him some insight as well. Um he, he's someone that always speaks to P Dog about his himself. I've always seen it when I go watch them play games, etc. So you'll have some insight as well. So I think. I don't think that that swap is a, a massive um a massive trade-off um especially with the with simon arman and keshav maharaj i think those two can bat too you know um 
I wouldn't say that Keshav is a complete all-rounder, um, but he can hold his bat and, and put in a, a shift for you. Um, so, yeah, let's continue. No, look, I mean, this is also not just changing the side for the sake of changing a side. I think um, we all know that Anna's been ruled out. Um, I also think that, that Marco deserves a, a little bit of a break. I mean, that, that lanky body of his has been through the mill the last couple of months, and, and we, also have to, we also need to look after what, what lie ahead, you know, in the next couple of months for these guys. So I think Marco can do with a, with a good break. So it's not just changing for the sake of changing, um, Ken. Uh, you, you then rest Marco and you, you set out to play the two spinners and you look and you say, well, everybody's got a crack at it, but the one oak that probably deserves a crack more than anyone hasn't had a crack at it yet, uh, i.e. Ryan. Um, so it was, a, it was a simple choice there. Um, but no, Ken, it's, it's not a case of every time we play, because we play so few, we're going to change the sides. Uh, um, We've got a really good idea of what the guys are about. Um, yeah, for me, it's come the end of the year when, when India arrive at our shores, we, we want to have a settled unit going forward. And not a settled 11, a settled squad, so that we can, depending on what the conditions are, we can be quite fluid in our decision making. There's it right there, guys. You hear that? Um, a fluid squad, um, a fluid squad, and, a, and rather a solid squad rather than a solid 11. very important that because that means and then he said you'll pick according to it's fluid squad that you can pick according to the conditions um Khalid, why was there no show yesterday let's pick uh, and about the squad announcement i just explained it at the beginning of the show i said that this it's pointless for me to do a odi talk in the middle of a test series um it, i wouldn't have given, i wouldn't have given it justice so we're gonna be a, doing a deep dive on the squad announcement and all of those type of things on the show after this test series so that we go into it in depth and preview the, the white ball games um i don't want to go and switch into another format right now i'm focused on test cricket at the moment i want to give it my full attention and that's why we didn't do that yesterday we put up a press conference for you guys to go and watch we put up an article for you guys to see as well with regards to the selection so we will do a full show on that after this test series i'll do a, a review like this as well I'll, discussing each point that Rob Walter had to say. I'm going to be doing a watch along with that press conference as well. I was present there too. So that will happen after this test series. It only makes sense. I don't know why they gave us a full press conference um, for the team announcement now. Um, I think I thought it maybe, but that's maybe because of scheduling um, and as well because they thought it was interesting. They might as well do it while they do the team announcement for the White Ball Arena. But I like to do my things in, in order. I don't want to be switching formats and talking cross formats. I want to focus on one format and then move on to the next. It only makes sense for me and for the channel as well. Let's continue. Should we, what, what will you be doing after this test for the next seven, eight months? That is a hell of a question. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, we're obviously looking for, for content for possibly an A-side that um, I'll also look after. And... A lot of these younger guys would probably form a part of that A-side again in terms of their development. So for me, it's, it's looking after the next crop of batters and the next crop, a couple of them are already in this group. And also there are a few guys domestically that have done particularly well. Looking after the next crop of, of quick bowlers um, so that we continually can um, afford guys an opportunity to rest when, when their bodies are bad enough. Um, so now that would be the first step, Tim, is, is, is to find content for the A side. I'm very optimistic that something uh, will crop up in the next uh, couple of months, hopefully around June, July. So, yeah. But for, for starters, I'll be going home and just chilling for a bit. Um, uh, obviously, Rob and I, I'm a bit of a sounding board for Rob as well with regards to a, a lot of the guys. And, um, yeah, and then hopefully start preparing in earnest for an A tour. Also look at our emerging program. Again, I'll, I'll 
continually be involved there together with whoever the coaches are there. Um, so I'll be keeping busy in that respect, yes. I wonder if some of the guys that have been selected in this particular test series, like the younger guys, like the newer guys maybe, like Tony, uh, maybe Vian Mova and, and those guys, or maybe even Gerald Kutsia, well, even Keegan, I think, to a degree, if he doesn't get some runs in this particular series, will go on this A tour. Or they will go for brand new guys from the domestic series, um, team. Because I think there's some guys that Shukri needs more time with. Like, for, I, for example, Tony Dezorzi, maybe Keegan Peterson. Um, even to a degree, um, I would say um, Aiden to an extent as well. Even though Aiden did get 100, I think um, being back into this team as one of the main players um it would be nice to maybe have some more time that that, that Shukri can get some more time with the maybe the newer guys maybe not aiden um aiden aiden seems to have found his game and i hope that he can keep the consistency going um but the likes of tony de Zorzi, the likes of senator mutasami the likes of um vian Mulder, maybe um even marco jansen and and gerald with regards to the batting side of things if they maybe can get some more time with shooks and with the batting consultants, etc., to, to work on their game and for him to actually embed his mentality into them and the way he wants to go forward with this particular team. Um, let's continue. Uh, I think it's my question next. Um, I think. Oh, after Fidos, I think. Yeah, the planning is, 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 is the critical year for me, if it does. So, yeah, um, the next cycle is, and I'm not making light of, of the series in any way. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for, for me to see where the, where the guys are at. But, yeah, so we've got India come the end of the year. We want to have a settled squad by then, as I mentioned. So the winter is going to be critical. And then start earmarking um, potentially who the guys are. We're going to look to take to New Zealand. We've got a tour to the West Indies and then Pakistan and Sri Lanka come here. So we're quite busy next year, which is great. Um, so yeah, look, ultimately we want to be reaching Test Championship Finals. And I think these are the building blocks in ensuring that we can uh, launch a really good onslaught on that, cha uh, that, that championship. Um, we, we might be a little bit away on the, on the batting front, uh, and, and that's that's no secret, um, but I also don't think that we are a million miles away. I think we, we've got the, the um, personnel. It's really just how we ensure that they get the necessary experience, and that's where the winter programs are going to be important for us. Yeah, that's nice they're going to have winter programs. Would the same question have been asked if, if it was someone else? Yeah. I don't know why. Players get pairs. Um, and I'd hate to think it's because it's Timber and because of the spotlight that's been on Timber um, over the, the last couple of months. And in his first test, he, he, he gets a pair. He's got two good nuts, maybe one tactical um, mistake in terms of we lined up a certain bowler. It's no deep conversation. <laughs> Batters get pairs. They've got to move on. They've got to deal with it. It doesn't make him special or otherwise. And I don't think, you know, I can tell you now, there's been no special conversation around that. Cut it up and, and deal and find a way. I want you guys to, I want to ask you guys if I should have asked that question. Um, um, the way Shukri answered the question was very straightforward. Um, I think he maybe thought that I was maybe trying to cause some controversy around him, but which is not the case. Um, I wanted to actually understand from his point of view, what does he do with players that fail? I just didn't say it in that way. So Temba got a pair, which is not something I think that is very often that happens in test cricket. Um, or with two batters. Um, it happens, yes, to batters, but I don't think it happens often. Now, when I looked at the stats with regards to how many captains got pairs on debuts, 
there has been a lot actually. So 25, I think it was, and Faf and AB on that list too. So in that regard, he's probably he's probably right. You know, batters do get pairs, but I wasn't worried about the pair. I was worried about what I wanted to know more, and I would have liked to actually a follow up question on that, uh, which I didn't get. But um, what I would have liked to know is what does he, what type of conversations does he have with batters when they fail? And I maybe should have asked it in that way instead of highlighting Temba Babuma as the person in the presser, um, um, as the person to highlight. So. I would have liked to know from his perspective what type of conversations he has with people when they go through a patch like that, when you get a pair, because a pair is probably the worst thing that you can get as a batter. You know, um, there's no nothing worse than that. It's to get two two ducks in a row in, in one particular game is probably the worst thing that can happen to any batsman. So I wanted to actually know what he what sort of conversations he has with that batter to try and get them ready. Because I mean there's a lot of pressure on Tim Babuma. I support him 100 percent and you guys all know that. Um, I'm always on the on the channel trying to defend him from the dehumanization that he gets and the, and, the, and the unfair criticism with regards to certain factors. But I also um, do feel that I'm quite um, honest when it comes to criticizing players when they don't perform. And he didn't perform in that match. As a captain, you ex I expected him to step up. He got a pair, which happens. Um, I understand that it happens. Like a 7-0 against United happens. Um, but I'm still critical about every single play in that team. Um, so uh, it is a criticism to Temba. Uh, it is unfortunate that that happened to him um, as a captain on, the, on on his first test as captain. But I would have liked a little bit more maybe from Shukri from from regards to what sort of conversations he had. But if I phrased it, if I maybe phrased the question a little better, we probably would have gotten it. Because maybe he thought that I was maybe targeting Temba and trying to get some some sound bite out of him so that it can go viral or some people can start destroying them and that wasn't my intention at all um because all you guys know actually that i'm not that type of person so yeah i would have preferred i would have liked a better answer over there um yeah uh it would have been nice to get some insight um into how he thinks about um getting players out of ruts or getting players um when they've had a bad performance or what sort of conversations does he have with those players and maybe in the next um press club when we do get him i'm going to ask it to him in that manner rather um yeah um i think i should have maybe phrased that question a little bit better but i don't know what you guys think you can let me know in the live chat Is still a key member of the side, but also at some point with the gap in his matches, um, the longevity of a can also guys. Sorry, this is the back on that question. I was a bit surprised that no one else actually asked that question because the question was asked, I can't remember who was asked in, in Centurion to Kahiso Rabada about Temba, but it wasn't asked to Temba himself. So I was, I mean. I did. I'd asked him by actually um, in the press. I think I asked him about well, how is he going to bounce back, or how does he after that performance? How does he feel that he wants to bounce back, etc. I think I remember asking him that. Um, um, but from his perspective, um, I, I was I was surprised that nobody actually asked asked him that question as well. Um, Brandon Brandon Nido says, "Yeah, you asked it wrong. It's okay. Next time, ask it the way you intended it." um yeah i just but i didn't i mean i didn't i mentioned timba's name um but i didn't want uh, yeah i mentioned timba's name but i wanted him to actually explain um how uh, what sort of conversation that's why i said what sort of conversation have you had so that you can motivate him so that he's ready for the next game that was actually the question the mention of timba was mentioned but i wanted to know how he's going to how what sort of conversation he would have had with timba to 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 get him to, to to because there's no way that Temba got to a, a pair and then he this was like ah okay whatever he must have felt something um he must have felt disappointment he might have felt must have felt some sort of shame or something for that so it would be crazy to think that you just leave a player like that and not have a conversation with him and, and get him see how he is and how his head is after before, after that happens to you so yeah I maybe should have phrased it a little bit better you're right bro um yes <laughs> in fact we had that conversation as recently as yesterday again so yes it's, it's really just 
Um, we're going to have to obviously see how Dean's winter looks like. Um, hopefully he can find a gig in the, in the county scene that will, will, will keep him ticking over. And then come the start of next season, see, see where everyone's at, not only Dean. And ultimately, if, if we feel that, irrespective of, of the age or experience, if the player is um, good enough and still performing, then he'll still form part of our squad, you know. Um, so, but it is, it's a real question and it's, and it's a real concern for guys like Dean who, who, who don't get to showcase their talents as, as, as much as some of the other guys do. Um, we'll have to just wait and see how that pans out, uh, Kanyesa. Uh, Ditya saying, Khalid, bro, listen, you asked it in the correct way, bro. No tension, Shukri just got triggered, I guess. I don't know if he was triggered, but I just felt maybe, from his perspective, I think, because so many people have been on Timba's case over the last couple of months, he maybe thought that that was a, me trying to get a soundbite or something out of him, which, which is not my, wasn't my intention at all. Um, I just wanted to know how he speaks to his players to motivate them. Um, particularly if they had a performance like that, um, when something like that happens to you. But okay, let's move on from that now. Um, I'm good with that. Thanks, Aditya, for the, for the comments. You know, Aiden and my chats are very minimal. Eh? We hardly chat. Uh, we're just checking with each other if everyone's okay, like I do with any other player. Um, yeah, I think any player, when he gets back and he knows that he's got the backing of a coach or an environment, just um, <clears throat> sometimes it's easier to, to perform. But sometimes it can also weigh heavily, you know, and I think they're one or two other guys. Where they, where I think they, they might be at, in that place where sometimes a player feels he needs to repay the faith that the coach shows in him, and that can also be debilitating. Um, and I don't ever want it to reach that stage. But on Aiden's front, look, Aiden's a hell of a player. We always knew that. Um, he just goes about his business as he, he did absolutely no, nothing different in the first test in his prep as, of, as he would now. We haven't had any major conversations just like we didn't have now. Um, I think it's just that sense of knowing and uh, if there is a need to to have a convo we do guys that is very important what he said there because i think i remember telling you guys on the show before that my opinion on aiden markham from conversations with him in the past from watching his career quite closely that he's a type of player that um shines in a good environment when there's a good environment around him and there's a backing from the coach and they believe in him and he's not kind of seen as the as the one of the players just in the team he's more one of the the, the star players in the team and, and and the environment around him for me is the thing that really kicks aiden into a different gear i saw it with the titans when at the beginning of his career at the titans before mark boucher actually fully was the coach um because because Aiden wasn't a lot under Mark Boucher actually when it comes to playing he actually went to four day cricket and then straight into the protest team when he on his comeback um Aiden's a type of player that that thrives in a good environment it's 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 been like that at SEC it's like that as a son as Hyderabad as well he thrives in a good it was like that as well um it's always going to be the case with Aiden Markham. I think that he feeds off his peers, he feeds off the environment, the, the relationship with his players, and the relationship with his coach. And that's when you get the best out of Aiden Markham. And we seeing we see all that now at the SEC, the way um, he captained the side, etc. And that's why I think he'll be a brilliant captain for the T20s. Um, I was extremely happy when I saw that news, when I, when the when the story broke. I did think it would happen um and i was happy that 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 it, that it did happen so that is aiden Markham for you 
I'm liking that Shukri actually said it himself so that I don't have to actually think that I'm whack. But he's a guy that that does thrive on a good environment. Like he said, you know, there's some players that also need a backing. They need an arm around them. They need that backing from the coach for them to thrive. I think Aiden Moore thrives off the environment that he's in. If the team culture is good and the environment is good and he's getting along with his peers and his players, that's when Aiden, you get the best out of Aiden. And I hope it may, how long may it continue across fingers in the test arena and other formats. Um, yeah, I Yeah, thankfully, Aiden got runs or else it wouldn't have been brave, it would have been daft. Eh? Um, and classy selection, might, people might be jumping up and down saying, well, that's daft because the guy he replaced was one of the leading lights. I don't think I go out and set to be, do certain things in a, in a, in a brave way. I, I, I think I, I'd like to think I am a guy that um, thinks th things through carefully. But I'm always going to look to... Um, maybe, shall we say, take the, low, the road less traveled. Um, and that's where I'd like this, this side to go, you know, just put them in, in places that, that are uncomfortable, um, challenge them in, in ways that they might not have been challenged before and see how we come out on the other side. And um, It's the growth I'm, I'm looking for, um, and I've, I've, I've got to be patient with it. Uh, and, and hence, we do certain things like this, Ken, but Again, um, no, I don't go, I don't, I, th I like brave, I don't like different. So, yeah, if it's brave, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to wear that, that cap. Um, because sometimes we can be different just for wanting to be different as well. Um, I'd like to think that the decision to play two spinners here is a well thought out one. I think it is, um, to be honest with you, because from what I've seen at the Wanderers over the last couple of a couple of years actually to be honest with you ever since it got that bad rating from the icc when we played against india um you know otis gibson had a lot to do with his pitch at wonders actually to be and and, and our pitches because he started asking for people to, for the groundsman to, to to make spicy wickets um and those spicy wickets ultimately yes it helped us win test matches and yes it helped our bowlers but it helped up. It, it wasn't. It was a detriment to our. Um, um, it was a detriment actually to our batters. You know, um, that was that's the problem. Um, it's a detriment to our, our our batters in the end of the day. So, I don't know. Eh? Um, it, it, it's actually come back to haunt us these spicy pitches that we were trying to create. So yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult one. I don't know what messages we can still be sending, but I think our, 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 our and their proud traditions and heritage should be ample proof that, that we need to be playing more test cricket. We, we cannot um, be excluded on the basis of not being a leading light in, 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 in test cricket. We are, and so are the West Indies. And the sad reality is that um, in a place like the West Indies, and hopefully not here, the lack of test cricket or the lack of, of, of the international or the national side playing in the test arena might mean that interest starts waning, you know, and, and, and that's a place you never want to reach because once a, a youngster doesn't have um, that burning ambition and desire to play for his country, then, then that spells the beginning of the end. So um, hopefully both sides can, when they do play and when um, we next play, can put in performances that 
make people sit up and say, well, we need to have both South Africa and the West Indies as part of um, the nations that need to be playing a lot more test cricket. Um, I beg your pardon, I didn't hear that. Back to the rights mentioned in particular. Is it also informed by the fact that he has the one in particular, he's also found ways to make runs on a variety of surfaces? Was it this way through some stats quickly, especially when spin dominated? He also made runs in those particular matches. Like one that comes to mind was when Pitch up from 16, he made 194 um, at his base in Brown. Yes, um, that does play a part. Um, I think. One takes all of these things into account, you know. Um, I, I just think that when it comes to, to you want to be consistent with, with selections, you want to reward good performances. But last time I checked, we could only fit 11 players in, you know, and, and, and similarly, we can only fit seven batters in, seeing that I'm old fashioned and I'm surprised that hasn't popped up yet. Um, but. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes it just takes a bit longer for, for people to, to get that opportunity. He's definitely one that's going to be a big part of the side going forward. Um, that's not a brave call, Ken. That's just me <laughs> saying that I'd like to think he's going to be one of those guys through performances at domestic level, knowing the character he is, um, is someone that um, we can start building our... our um, our test side around, you know. So, yes, opportunity didn't come first up, but and it's not a once-off opportunity. Um, I think he's going to have a, a long, successful run in the side. Okay, um, that's that, guys. That's everything that has to do with the test preview. Um, this is a show on the test preview um, for the second test, and that's what we obviously discussed on this particular show and went through the press conference, of course. Um, to the people asking about the squad announcement for the ODI and T20s, I'm doing a separate show on that, closer to the T20 series, ODI series, ahead of that. I want to focus on Test Cricket for now and then move on to the White Ball Arena. It's completely two different formats, coaches, mentalities, etc. that uh, we need to focus on each separately. So I'm going to do that after this Test series. We will get into the ODI stuff, discuss the squad, go in depth and all of those type of things. So you guys will have to wait on our channel for that one. Um, and then join us when we do those conversations. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, the game kicks off at 10 tomorrow morning at the Wanderers. I uh, will be putting out a little. Um, I will be putting out a little um, image on Facebook and Twitter on um, actually on Facebook and on Instagram for a competition that we're going to be running. I'll be picking randomly in the comment section um, some people that win tickets for the games. Um, so for today one, I've got tickets if you guys want um into the competition and we will pick randomly we will pick those particular players so let's um hope that south africa can get a good start to this test series i'm excited to to cover this one at the wanderers and yeah we will be doing obviously review shows after the game so thanks a lot for tuning in everybody hope you guys enjoyed this episode don't forget to download the latest issue of cricket fanatics magazine monthly Every issue is 100% free, straight to your inbox every month. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. Also, help us promote and grow South African cricket by becoming a patron today. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. And also, help us grow um, to help us create better content going forward. Like, comment, share, as well as go to clickyfanaticsmag.com for all regular updates, reports, match, um, if all of those type of things um, is on the site on a daily for your daily dose. And also, don't forget to obviously um subscribe to the channel uh, please do so click that notification bell for all future videos i'm still seeing 40 percent of you are watching the videos without subscribing to the channel so please that 40 percent, please subscribe so we can hit that 4k mark we're on the right we're on the road to 4,000 subscribers on youtube so please help us get there thanks a lot for everybody for watching and i'll see you guys very very soon for another review daily show um take care everybody be safe if you're in Johannesburg and in the places that it's storming. Um, and I hope you guys have an excellent evening. See you guys tomorrow with another review show. Peace out, everyone.